session, uh, we will discuss RTDS journey, its milestones, and what lies ahead for the magazine. And for that, I couldn't have had a better panel of, of uh, discussions today. And may I invite to the stage Mrs. Jinder, Anupa Mehta, Kirish Shahane, and Abhay Sardesai. I'd just like to start by introducing uh, the panelists. You might know them already, but um, I'd just like to do a brief introduction. Um, so, Sangeeta Jindal is one of India's leading art patrons and philanthropists. She's the chairperson of the JSW Foundation, which drives diverse social deployment projects, de sorry, development projects, and is the founder president of Art India magazine. She's been an Eisenhower Fellow and sits on the board of several international museums and foundations. Anupa Mehta is an art consultant and writer. Her eponymous art space in Mumbai has been the venue of several residencies, curatorial projects, and exhibitions by emerging artists. She was the founder, founding editor of Art India and the author of India 20, a book of interviews with leading contemporary artists. Girish Shahane is an independent writer and curator based in Bombay. He was editor and later consulting editor of Art India magazine. He has written columns for Time Out magazine, DNA newspaper, Yahoo India, Scroll.in, and Mint Lounge. Shahane was the director of the Skoda Prize for Indian Contemporary Art, artistic director of Art Chennai 2014, and artistic director of the India Art Fair in 2015. Seems a long time ago. Amit Desai has been the editor and is the editor of Art India, the premier art magazine of India since November 20, uh, 2002, so 20 years now, I bet. Wow. wow. 20 years, wow. Uh, under his editorship, the magazine has developed a culture studies oriented approach and has become more interdisciplinary in its theme based explorations. He has taught at the University of Mumbai, SMDT University, and TIS, among other institutions. He writes in English and translates from Marathi and Kokani. So welcome everybody, and we're going to launch into this discussion. I hope that uh, after that, we're going to open up the Q&A. And yeah, please feel free to ask us your questions. Uh, but I'm going to start with right from the very beginning, which is Mrs. Jindal. Why did you feel the need to start such a magazine? And I would also like to ask you, because I saw your mother in the film, what was the role that your mother, Mrs. Urmila Kanoria, had to play in this, if at all? So basically, when I got married, there's one thing that I was told that I can't contribute to the business. Because we were not allowed to go to the office or try to make money or anything like that. I said, they do something which is meaningful. And I then, by chance, got then met Dr. Bhava, Homi Bhava, uh, Dr. Jamshed Bhava, I went to NCPA and I went to Mr. Bhava and said, Sir, I want to work with you. So he asked me, the, what is your qualification? I said, I have none. Only thing I can do is that I have enthusiasm and I'll do what I can. Um, and then I worked with him for some time and he gave me an office at the NCPA, uh, which right now is a ticketing office of NCPA. And Anupa was my person who assisted, who would work with me. There just two of us and suddenly Sabrina came. Uh, is Sabrina around? Yeah. Yes. She came and there were three of us and we, would, uh, we had spent, uh, we had given some purpose to the NCPA. We used to do some kind of, some cultural engagement at the NCPA. So one afternoon we were both talking and we were talking about something, uh, what's happening to the south of India. There was no internet, there was no Google, there was nothing. And we said, let us start a magazine. And the fact was that who will pay for it? And then finally this magazine started. It was just a kind of 
and ambition that we all had. And we thought that we will do it. And that's how it all started. We didn't have any research, nothing. But it was just, we wanted to make a difference in the world. So a real passion project, right? I mean, it was just a labor, it was a, it was a labor of love. Yeah. And I remember those initial days were, as Girish also mentioned, quite crazy. Uh, before the advent of the internet, you know, things were sent by fax in those days. Uh, you know, we used to get transparencies instead of digital images, etc. So Anupam, when when Sanita approached you, uh, what made you say yes to be the first editor? And you know, where did you think that this was going to lead you, or what did you you know? Did you see any challenges or you just thought, wow, this is really an opportunity? Uh, you know, Neera, I have a background in journalism and the arts. I used to write for the New Post and Times of And then one day I got a call from Katna Shah, she's right there. She said, I want you to meet with my friend. And I said, what about? And she said, no, I just want to go with her. And I met Anita very fast and she said, join me. And that was that. So uh, we started working on the Jindal Arts Creative Center at NCPA. And then I think one day we were just sitting there chatting and we just sort of impulsive and thought about an art magazine. And you know, the journalist and he said, oh wow, this is what I want to do. And we just jumped into it. And I said, oh, I will get even with you for that. Said we were very raw in those days, you know. So Mandosh was the first designer of the magazine. Um, you know, in those days, I think what was important was that um, after there was the first magazine on the stands, there were other publications, there were other film periodicals. But I think Sangeeta's idea was to have a magazine that was accessible. And that was one of the reasons for starting this magazine. Thanks. Uh, I, let me turn to Girish because Girish, you followed up, right, after uh, Anupa. Um, when you took over the helm for the few years that you were there, what were the things that you wanted to focus on? What was your sort of vision for the magazine? Well, it was called the uh, News Magazine of India, which was not obviously, as Mr. Bush said, the first choice. However, I think it was kind of appropriate because the news part of it in those days, that even if it was a quarterly, and it seems absurd now, but actually getting news about what was happening was possible even once a week in a quarterly publication. Like our international news, people would just not know. There's no way of actually gaining access to that information. So that information the content of the magazine and balancing it with the more theoretical aspects, with the concentration on contemporary art, uh, with some space for the matter. That, that was the kind of focus. No, and you're very right because uh, artists did mention to me that uh, Art India was very often a window to the external world. As I said, this was really before the dawn of the internet and we didn't have so much access to what was happening. But because we covered some of these, um, you know, these review in terms of reviews or news as it were, uh, people had an idea of what was happening uh, internationally as well as nationally. Uh, and okay, so I'm going to come to you now. And um, you know, when you were approached 20 years ago, um, you know, to take over, yeah. So uh, you know, um, what was it that made you take up the job? And, and you know, what did you think that um, this would bring? I mean, where would you take the magazine from there? What was your vision in that sense? Right. You know, uh, one way of actually sort of coming to terms with the uh, pastness of the past and its presence is to uh, sort of realize how deep the genealogy actually sort of goes. You have Mrs. Jinder, of course, and Anupa, uh, and Girish, but also two important people who are not around, Nancy and Ranjit, who are also part of the uh, you know, entire process, uh, by way of which Art India came into its own. So I remember, in fact, Girish asking me, and I used to uh, teach at SMT, uh, I used to teach literature and aesthetics at the University of Bombay. And I used to also moonlight at the Mobile Park Center at the NCP. And um, I remember calling Girish once, and he gave this fabulous lecture on Karavaji. And uh, after that, uh, I think Mrs. Tindal had been having a conversation with Girish, 
and Girish asked me what I was doing and whether I could uh, consider joining Art India. I jumped at the offer, of course, and um, I sort of joined Art India with Girish as my consulting editor. And uh, sort of one issue blended into another. There were all kinds of uh, extraordinary themes that we addressed over the years. And uh, sort of, you know, and uh, we had a huge narrative which spanned the arc of 25 years. Yeah, so talking about that whole arc and, and you know, 25 years, I want to come back to you, Mr. Jindal, to ask you, um, how, do, so how do, have you seen, I mean, also, you know, taking a bit of a distance, you know, in the day-to-day, -day, the editorial uh, decisions, uh, how do you feel that the magazine has evolved over the past 25 years? And um, you know, what do you think its contribution really has been to the community you? You know, when the first magazine was done, I was very involved. Anupa and I would actually look at all the color correction and uh, everything. And even with Yuri, I was involved. But my life didn't start to go I got involved with the heritage at, uh, you know, at uh, my children and then our townships were built in all our countries. So I relied everything to the editors. And I had implicit trust to apply. So earlier I was very much hands on with them. Now it is just faith and trust. So since then, till then, there is a difference. Right. Yeah. And as I said earlier, you know, it really. The, the team has had so much editorial freedom to, to do exactly you know, what we wanted to write on um, and, and, and you know, the issues we wanted to raise. And Anupa now looking at it, right? I mean, you, know, you were there in the initial years. But, uh, uh, how have you seen the magazine evolving and you know, you know, what do you think its contribution really is um, to the art community? So, you know, I, I would say the magazine has only gone from strength to strength. Girish, um, you know, when you look back and how do you perceive the development of Art India in these 25 years? Jindal mentioned that uh, all of us were in our uh, late 20s, early 30s. All the editors, she herself, Zaina, uh, Aisha, all of them. So, uh, and, and equally important for the artists, I mean, there was a point where galleries were opening up because of globalization, there was a new kind of market, a new kind of internationalism, and a lot of young artists were running through and then being covered. So most of us wrote articles about artists who were in their 20s, which were published in Art India. And now I don't see that much gallery representation for the really young. It's moved to the presidency circuit. It's moved to different circuits of exhibition. And uh, so the question is how that can be captured. And also the fact that the magazine is now run by people who are not in their 20s and their 20s. And do, do we then connect with that group? Because I think it, it is important to do so, uh, because that's where the energy comes from. And I find myself feeling like an old fogey uh, looking at the young art. And so, you know, that's, that's the big question. What is really happening there and how you can tap into that? Yeah, I think, you know, 
I'm wondering whether Girish is hinting at you had something for us, other than you and me, right? I mean, uh, you know, whether it's a time for a change of thought, but maybe you want to respond to this. No, I believe in uh, young at heartness, as it were. Uh, but uh, you know, one thing that has actually helped me to uh, sort of be continuously in touch with lots of younger people is the fact that I have taught for the last 25 years. I've taught in various spaces, you know, from uh, the undergraduate uh, uh, sort of colleges in central Bombay to uh, the drama school in Girgaon. So there's been a whole range of people that I have continuously met and that has in fact in more ways than one replenished me and also uh, inflected the way in which I have understood uh, this act of approaching you know, younger people, their persuasions, their enthusiasms and uh, their ways of making art and sort of uh, presenting. But I guess uh, to sort of jump off uh, from where Girish uh, left, you know, one of the uh, most sort of uh, uh, extraordinary problem that we were faced with and are faced with uh, almost all the time was uh, this huge bogey that was once raised about the demise of reading, uh, you know, with the coming of the internet. And the other bogey that was uh, being ra raised was the fact that. Uh, sort of print journalism is sort of headed into this uh, black hole and, and how sort of uh, digital journalism and virtual space journalism is going to take over. But what we have understood over the last uh, 10 years is that uh, there is a complementarity. There is a way in which print journalism, uh, print writing and writing in digital spaces sort of leak into each hmm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I'll turn to Mrs. Jinder. Uh, you know, it's a celebration today, 25 years. When you look back, um, which have been your, which has been your favorite issue or which have been your favorite issues? You know, when you, you know, when, uh, I'll probably say the first one because I'm special, but I'll leave that to you. So, you know, which have been your favorite issues? Well, the first issue is something which I remember very vividly. And how we needed a place, we went to Jazz by the Bay and then uh, we got Inapuri and Inapuri helped us to get Mandi Baba. Never romanticism. All of us were all dreaming, oh, we're going to do this, we got an easel made, I still remember that. Those days, even small thing was like huge. Our life was so, uh, so within, so excited. Now things are not that much. <laughs> um, but this um, Art India, I feel it's more a chronicle, it is, it is understanding, you know, otherwise you just see figures. So I think the things have changed, we all have changed and as Girish is saying that we have to think of the new gen and we, we are also changing. Now first time Art India is now digital and we have Instagram and Twitter and what have you, all of that. It was not in our times. We are also learning from them. So I think there is some shift, I agree. And we are doing other things as well. We are doing this artist residencies in Nampi. And Heritage has somehow got in the middle. Um, we've also started doing Art India Education Online for the new gen. If I have all my children, they probably know more about Picasso than Hussein and Raza. So we are trying to do that for the new gen. Yeah, we, the, it's been tremendously, and we launched the uh, Art of the Education program uh, recently, and maybe we come back to that a bit uh, you know, towards the end. Uh, but yeah, Girish, throwing that to you, so when you were at Art India as the editor, you know, which were your memorable issues? Or which issue was your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> the first issue, of course, uh, because John Berger wrote thanks to Ranjit, the consulting editor, he met John Berger. And I said, oh, we met John Berger, maybe he write for us. And John Berger didn't have e even email, but <coughs> all of us did have it. Ranjit hand wrote a message to him and just near the time we were going to press, we got a letter from John Berger and published that first wow. piece by him. It was a beautiful And uh, Geeta Kapoor also. I want to 
the uh, government. It's a good idea. Right, and back to you, Anupa. So, uh, lots of firsts. We had Timothy Hyman Wright, we yeah. had um, Thomas McKenley Wright, Geeta Kapoor, and you know, I, I remember being quite awestruck by all these people and you know, to have the temerity to be reaching out to all the greats in the art, to be writing for a new magazine in India. So yeah, I think all those issues were special. I remember we had a special shoot from Vishakapatnam uh, where Ravindran Reddy was making the sculpture, it was a nude, and we weren't sure whether we could put it on the cover of a in those days. But we did, and uh, you know, it's among us. And then there was, of course, the special issue for Bozards, where Jidish and Sudarshan, equally young as me, uh, and who traveled to Paris with us and you know, exhibition, apart from being featured in the. So I think those were prescient in many ways because, um, you know, all of us were young, we had no idea where things were going to go. But as luck will have it, here we are. <laughs> 25 years together. Yeah, happy for you as well. I mean, you know, uh, you've been here the longest, so uh, you must have had many, many issues that come to mind. If you were to just focus on some spec, or maybe a particular article or, you know, columnist, we had Berger. Yeah. You know, I, uh, of course, you have. We have. I've had my share of grades. I've had people like Arjuna Padhyay or Papati, for example writing long and detailed essays on all kinds of uh, extraordinary themes. But you know, what I really pride um, Art India and what I'm really happy about uh, this entire sort of journey of 25 years is the fact that we've actually given lots of younger people a chance. And there are quite a few people, I'm thinking of Tamaini, there's Shweta, but quite a few younger writers who've actually, you know, broken new ground and continue into uh, curation and into art history and you can check out almost any issue and you'll find four or five new voices. Right. I think that's something quite remarkable. Yeah. We've followed that over the last couple of years. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, writers have written that they also broke their teeth with Art India and they also mentioned Abhay how you've guided them through the process as well and uh, helped them in their journey. Uh, but um, you know, and, and ask if you were to talk about a memorable, you know, your, any particular memorable moments. We talked about, but uh, memorable moments that you have. Quite a, quite a few, really. But you know, what I'm going to do is actually sort of talk about maybe three or four issues that I that have stayed with me. I think the first clutch of issues is the six issues that we've come out in the last three years. Six and, issues. Yes, I mean the the what I call the uh, uh, issues that actually address the absent years of the pandemic. And I find it uh, remarkable because they actually uh, present a compendium of voices, you know, uh, different ways in which artists and writers have tried to make sense of the sheer devastation that the pandemic brought about. So in, in more ways than one, they have documented this lost years. Right. You know, for, for, for ever. And for that reason, I think they are quite remarkable. Uh, the other sort of, I also look at, uh, you know, sort of issues that fall on uh, sort of either side of the number line, as it were. On the one hand, we have issues like food, food and art. And then you have issues which look at censorship. Ravi is here, we carried this image on the cover after the uh, infamous uh, Chandra Mohan incident. So these issues are very, very important to me because we responded with the issue you know, and uh, we responded with a plea for democracy. Uh, so in more ways than one, we tried to sort of marshal the uh, sort of art crowd as it were to posit a, a, a gesture of protest. So in that sense, these are some of the issues that I think uh, are quite just. Thank you. And also, Samita, your memorable moments? And art India, not necessarily issues, but you know, initiatives that you did. I don't think it's the issue. Yeah. For me, it was, as you say, it was my life. There were times when the business was not we went there, and was to see how this whole thing would survive. Because it was, of course, it is art India has never made any money. So uh, those were the memorable times. The tough times. The tough times that it has to start, and then at some time. I was not well for a year, and the point.
point was it will the Aunt India last? But it still continued. So yeah. as I said, my main endeavor is that the magazine has to move on. Everything else I need to be editors and the team. So I do my job and the rest belongs to the people at Aunt India. Yeah, the resilience of the magazine now. Girish, would you like to come in on any moment, any particular memorable moment that you had, apart from the issues, I mean, any incident that you remember? Where would 
you like to see the vaccine head evolve? In fact, if I, I can be a bit polemical here, sure. uh, because it just came to me. But again, I said that one is an old fogey, and I'll tell you how. Uh, one of your issues, Anupa, had uh, about, was about Guru Hussain. All of us were protesting, saying, of course, he has a right to offend by uh, painting nude Hindu goddesses. And so all of us were sort of free expression fundamentalists, so to speak. And now I go to court and there's a plaque saying, if you offend X, Y, Z, then you will be escorted from the premises. So it's a completely different sort of attitude than we had. And I don't understand it. So I cannot even claim to think of how it can be represented. Leave it to the young generation. They are energetic and they will figure it out. Yeah. And, you, and, and Abel, as the editor who's still there, um, you know, how, what do you see happening? And I mean, there have been shifts, right? I mean, I think people really appreciated our Insta presence, um, but, you know, maybe you'd like to just give us a sense of, you know, where, where your head's at right now. Well, you know, at the, at the heart of, I think, the idea of Art India, and at the heart of Mrs. Jindal's vision, is uh, this desire to instruct desire to make available to a larger sort of audience uh, and I think for me the desire to interpret. Uh, so in that sense I can see all that Art India has been doing over the last 25 years and uh, especially over the last three years as uh, a series of avatars of this enthusiasm. You know whether it's Art India education where we are trying to, we are sort of uh, playing with the model of online and on-site instruction and education. Whether it's the uh, Art India Residency, where we will have a, 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 a sort of feverishly interdisciplinary sort of uh, you know, uh, interplay uh, between different artists from different disciplines. And where will that be? Okay, in, in Hampi. In Hampi, okay. Uh, and, and also the uh, sort of large publication program that we thought about, uh, and maybe sometime in the future, Mrs. Jindal might uh, enlighten us a little more about it, the museum. Uh, oh. Uh, so, so I, I look at it really as uh, you know different sort of chapters and different chapters with interlocking doors and windows and degrees uh, sort of flowing form as it were. Right. No, that's a beautiful way to end. Um, I think we're. Um, we're a bit out of time, but we do have um, some questions. I see one hand there. It can be two hands. Also, please introduce yourself. Mike, mics. mics. Uh, hi, thank you, Meera. Uh, uh, I'm Rahul Kumar. I am an artist and an art journalist myself. Uh, so first of all, congratulations to the entire art of the team for uh, being 25 years, can't wait for the next 25 years, so for more power to all of you. Uh, my question is, uh, and you know, uh, I think Sanita uh, very, very aptly said that you know, her dream is to get her children to read, because it's a generation which is very different. Uh, it wants to consume knowledge, but very differently. So, uh, and Abhay mentioned at multiple points also in the conversation about, uh, you know, going digital. Uh, so my question really is, of course, there is a whole romance of paper and print and holding the magazine, etc. But, uh, I mean, how do you and I also search for anything? We absolutely just open our phone, go to the Google, you know, search information online. So having the magazine in an online format versus digital, I think the whole idea of digital is a very different DNA. So are you, uh, in Antigua, are you seriously looking at, you know, going digital? Or is it going to be print and uh, online version of it? That's my question. We, as we say, old habits die hard. We all love the print. So the thing is that we are doing a hybrid model. And we are also realizing this thing that it will become online very soon. So we are keeping the print on, but we are working towards online and digital. We don't want to leave it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Tasneem, Tasneem has a question. 
So you must see you know, this the light. So firstly, I want to say that, is, is it on? Yeah. No. No. No? No. Yeah. no. Is it on? No. So firstly, I want to say that for me, I was part of the early team. I was an advisor, a very young advisor in the early 90s uh, for Ardenia, when you just started, and it was a very, very good time. And congratulations uh, to all of you. Um, I also wanted to ask if you have thought about putting together a compendium, extracting some of the finest articles and doing because it is an archive, and there's such there's so little that sort of sweep of, of uh, the, the evolution of the whole uh, you know art environment. So I was wondering if you have you have mentioned. Sorry, this mic seems to come and go. <laughs> yeah. But we got the gist. Thanks, Tas thanks, Tasni. We got we got the question. Okay. Yes, yes, the answer is yes, Tasni. But also to sort of uh, go back to what you were saying, Rahul. You know, we already have a digital issue. And a digital issue sort of in fact if you uh, log on right now, the digital issue of the digital quadrant centennial issue is online. So you can check it out. Uh, the other thing is, uh, we have put the entire archive of the last 25 years online free. So that again is according to Mrs. Chidwell's vision. But sort of going back to Ryu uh, Tasneem, I, I, we're actually thinking of a series of uh, publications, and series of publications in different ways. You know, uh, sort of children's, one of the things that Mrs. Chidwell actually wants to do is Create a series of books for children. For the young masters for the children. So that's just one of the things. But yes, uh, uh, a series of compendia are in. Ravi, yeah. I'm just a thought that uh, when you think of different ways in which information is received now, and then something or something. But uh, it's not necessarily a transmission of media. So maybe we should not think in terms of digital and print and media. Of course, I love the print. As a photographer, I love the print too. So, but uh, the way things are received today is actually very, like, something about creation was happening too. Uh, it's very different. So maybe we should think about how information flows now other than how we digitize something which is digitized, but think of a completely different access of how people receive art, how people think of art, how, I mean, something like the meta talk, but I won't use the word meta because uh, it's something else. Yeah. But just to think of not the digital print as a binary, but as a completely new planet. I'm not thinking about this binary. In fact, thinking about it as a series of interlinked leakages, if you please. Uh, but you know, the only point that I'd like to make is the moment you sort of try and formalize uh, the production and distribution of information, you automatically sort of invest it with a certain shape and form. And uh, more often than not, the definitions that come to our rescue are those uh, that are to do with either the print form or the digital form. But yes, broadly speaking, what does a print do? Information flows in different capacities, at different levels, at different temperatures. Any further questions? One more than back. Hi, I'm an artist. I want to know: Do you feel? Uh, do you feel the magazine represents uh, art that is being produced in India? Like, do you think it? Democratically covers 1.3 billion people that live in India, or, or do you think it's um, a bit focused on the people we already know? And is there any kind of outreach for um, artists who are not, say, in the in the public light, but practicing? Um, yeah. 
is it representative of, of the entire country? Because it is the most important publication, I would say. Thanks, thanks for saying that. Uh, but yes, I mean, um, it, it addresses the uh, production of art and the sort of exhibition of art uh, mainly uh, in metropolitan centers. And uh, even if one might actually claim that it represents the nation holistically, one knows deep down that it's a partial picture. Yeah. Right? So we start from that point. And we try to sort of uh, uh, widen our ambit, and we try to expand our horizons, uh, issue after issue, theme after theme. And in fact, one of the one of the issues that we have lined up is art from tier two, tier three cities. And I'm using tier two, tier three uh, only as a broad definitional sort of markers. So, uh, you know, this is an issue in which I guess we will be introduced to voices and sort of uh, works from uh, different art centers all over India, which are non-metropolitan. Anything that you wanted to add, Mr. General, to that? So as as uh, Mayor is saying, that we are trying, but we cannot say that we know it all. have any commercial interest or anything. We don't have a gallery, we have nothing that we want to push. So from whatever resource we have, we try our best. Yeah, we do look at you know experimental work that's happening, especially among the young generation. So there is a conscious effort to do that, but yes, uh, we are limited. Um, in the scope um, you know, of cities that we cover, and I'm really hoping that we can widen that. Um, you know, we also need good writers. I mean, I think there's a huge paucity of writers, and I think that's something that we really need to address, because there's a generation which is coming up where we're finding, I always say every generation should have their own curators and writers, as they have their own artists. And we just find that they're not enough, I mean, they, they might have done an art history course, etc., but then it's also a question of how do you communicate that to a wider audience, to have the language to do that, and I think that's the kind of need of the art as well, to have real good writers apart from the whole, you know, art infrastructure that we need in this country. Okay, so on this note, thank you very much for being with us. Do we want to play the film again for those who missed it? Is that possible? <laughs> Rupesh? Yeah, okay, so then we'll play that initial film again. I know a lot of people came in later um, to celebrate 25 years. There's a, there's a little tote bag and uh, some postcards for all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. And of course, refreshments are there. And tea.